There are certain events that we look forward to every summer. Activities that the summer would just feel incomplete without. I'm not talking about boring, minor, or plain events. I'm talking about events that are extreme. That's right. It's the third annual YTD X Game Spectacular. And it starts right now on... You tried it! (laughs) You tried that! X Games! I'm Nick Novak, and as I introduce my co-hosts, they're going to tell me their favorite X game, Chad Hancock. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Competitive dick swinging. (laughs) Nick Geiger. Uh, Axe throwing at the competitive dick swinger. (laughs) (laughs) My favorite part about the X Games episodes is not alerting you guys at all that they're X Games episodes before we start. (laughs) (laughs) I should have known it was that time of year, too. I had no. I was just uh, thinking about that, you know, X Games. I was wondering if the X Games had been canceled because of coronavirus, right? But probably not the the Call of Duty portion of it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I just do... makes them more extreme, right? Like they're probably just they're they're like no masks. They're like licking each other just to see who's going to get the virus. <laughs> I actually looked it up, and the games were unfortunately canceled. Um, mm-hmm. We, as huge X Games fans, knew, know that. And Chad pretended he didn't know. <laughs> um, just trying to play it cool. They're now called the X Games. Just it's spelled E X. <laughs> <laughs> These games are no longer happening. <laughs> they are the X X Games. Just throw one more X on there, and then we're talking. Yeah, <laughs> triple X. Different games. games. Well, you're already talking reason. about the dick swinging games. It was your favorite event. So. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Did you say single X games? When I mentioned dick swinging, I was thinking of the triple X games. <laughs> One, we talked a lot about both of your childhoods at different points on the podcast. Uh, I haven't relayed too much of mine, and I'm going to share some very extreme things I did as a kid. And I made a little list here. Mm-hmm. So I I grew up in a town that was small and country-ish and there was a lot of pranks being being done by uh the the kids in the town and when i think back on these pranks they are very reprehensible and i'm surprised we didn't get in much bigger trouble for doing them so um i'm gonna list the 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 top five extreme things that we did these are literally all things that we did as kids in the town um, number five, one of the things we did a lot was, not a lot, but we did, was pee into a milk jug and then put it on people's doorsteps. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> prank. Was this, a, <laughs> was this a clear milk jug or was it one that like was painted, you know, like a opaque plastic so they wouldn't immediately know it was pee? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was just an empty milk jug, I guess. Whatever the standard milk jug. It wasn't like we didn't get Oberweiss and then be in there or anything. So. <laughs> did you all stand around next to each other peeing in it simultaneously, or did you at least take turns? I think we took turns. Like, you passed it around and peed in it. <laughs> the next one, the next two are pretty popular. The next one was toilet papering houses right you toilet paper you throw the toilet paper sure. in the trees or over the house have you guys done that one before yes yes use toilet paper uh, right? the third one <laughs> <laughs> yes to- piss all over oh. the toilet paper then throw it in the tree because <laughs> if not then no i haven't i actually think our house has been tp'd more than i've actually tp'd another house i think our house got tp'd like a couple times as a kid and i've only ever gone tp'ing once why do people tp your house uh, because me and my brother were like nerds and losers, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we would do it to each other's houses, like for homecoming or something. Like every mm. or homecoming or Halloween, everyone would go around TPing each other's house. Like my friends would TP my house, and we'd end up TPing theirs. So it wasn't like a necessarily a bad thing. Except my mom would be mad. We had to clean it up. Right. Uh, next was we would throw eggs or rocks at people's houses. Mm, yeah, you were a hooligan. I think that just wait that crosses a line for me. I think because uh, 
uh, the rocks I don't necessarily have a problem with, but when I see a bunch of eggs... <laughs> you don't? <laughs> well, not compared to the eggs, right? The eggs are the real offender, because, like, as we've talked about before, the best preparation of eggs is chocolate cake. So that's a lot of wasted chocolate cake <laughs> that I see when I see those eggs cracked up against the house. Uh-huh. Okay, then the, the next two are crimes. And as a kid, I didn't think anything of them. Uh, so number two, we would tie a we tied a stuffed animal to a string, and then at night when a car was crossing the road, we would pull it across the road like it was an animal uh, crossing the road, hoping the car would swerve. I don't know why. I mean, we, this could have resulted in somebody's. What the death. fuck is wrong with you? The fuck! Holy shit! <laughs> Did it work? Did they swerve a lot of times? Um, I don't remember. I mean, nobody died that I that I know of. <laughs> Go crashing into a tree and yell <laughs> cheer. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I had one time where I was just driving. This was when I was maybe like uh, 19 or something. And I was just driving home. And, all, and it was like one in the morning or something. And all of a sudden, this like huge bucket of white paint like somebody must have been standing at the side of the road and they just launched like an entire bucket of white paint at the side of my car. What? And it just like, <laughs> just all of a sudden just splashed all over the side of my car. I was like, what the fuck? And like, it scared the shit out of me. And, you know, fortunately there was like nobody on the road or anything like that. So it didn't, you know, but I didn't even see anybody. And then I just went to a car wash and like washed it right off or whatever. Before it could Were drive, you able but... to see out the windshield or I mean, obviously. I yeah, because it hit yet. the passenger side of my car. So it was like oh. all along the, the right hand side of my car. Did people yell nerd right before it hit? <laughs> <laughs> it was a uh, Robert Irvine and he was yelling, you fucking nerd. <laughs> <laughs> it was birthday cake battery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the last one, which is somehow even worse than pulling the stuffed animal across the road was that we would take, like, a wire and string it up across the road as cars were going by. So if someone had went by in a motorcycle, it could have decapitated them. So I don't know how, how we got away with doing these things. Jesus Christ. I know. It's terrible. I wasn't the bad kid, I swear. So you guys would just hold the wire and then the car would drive into it and you'd let it go? Like, what would what was the point? I think we, like, tied it to – because it was a – like in between a forest, the area we would tie it to a couple of trees. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Probably it would have broke. Like I don't remember exactly what wire we were using, but like looking back on that, I'm like, what in the fuck? <laughs> you were a uh, psychopath child. Yeah, and this is huge groups of kids. I imagine some motorcycle guy flying off his bike and like all of us cheering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd also imagine you'd be just creepy driving on this forest road with hordes of children swarming the edges, staring at you. Yeah. <laughs> One of them furiously pissing into a milk jug and staring at me. The... As your prone body lies unconscious off your motorcycle zone, dumping a jar of piss onto your head. <laughs> they go, they go, get his wallet. And then they looked at my address and go, leave the piss jug for his family. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> wow that's uh that's quite a confession Man. does it feel good to have gotten that off your chest i know it feels um it feels good i know we're probably have to bleep a lot of this out because i'm going <laughs> about statute of limitations but just bleep the whole first 10 minutes chad you recently had a story about your great prowess with uh cars right so you know i'm uh not exactly the most smart guy when it comes to cars I don't care about cars. I just want to be clear. Like we, you know, we drive like a 2006 Prius. I don't, I'm not a guy that's like into fancy cars. I don't care about cars at all. They just need to like be able to drive me. So that's all a long winded way to say, I don't give a shit about cars. So I, I don't know like basic things like how to change a uh, light bulb, <laughs> in a, like a headlight in a car or really even like how to change my windshield fluid. What? No, I know how to change. You don't know how to change your wind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the way you change the windshield fluid is you drive to the dealership and you say, <laughs> uh, "I need new windshield fluid." <laughs> anyway, so our car battery died, just completely died, and um, I had my my health insurance. They'll come out for fr health insurance with my auto insurance. They'll come out and do free roadside assistance. So they send a tow truck over. Uh, the guy checks the battery. He's like, yeah, it's dead. 
He's like, I could replace it for you right now, but it was like $700 he was going to charge me. So I run it past my wife. She's like, no. She's like, you can change the battery. I know you can do it. Just buy a new battery. They're like 200 bucks. You can change it. So I'm like, okay. So I tell the tow truck guy uh, to get out of here. And uh, after he jump starts my car, though, I say jump start my car, then hit the hit the road. <laughs> so, so he leaves. He threw a bucket of white paint on your car and then drove away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I look up, a, I find a YouTube video about like how to change the battery on a on a 2006 Prius, and it's not too bad, right? You just got to like pull some stuff out of the trunk, disconnect some bolts, and put the new one in. Reconnect. I have the tools to do it. So order a battery comes and I change the battery successfully. It takes me like an hour, but I do it. And I'll tell you, I have never felt like more of a man than when I plugged the new battery in, started up the car. And, you know, I was like, oh, so I did this. So great. Okay. So I'm a man for the first time in my life. So Uh car's working fine. Fast forward three days. I go down to start the car. And it won't start like just completely dead. (laughs) So I'm super pissed. I'm convinced, right? Like we've got it. We got a bum battery, right? Because there's I for sure followed all the instructions. Correct. So I go up. I'm like complaining to my wife. Like they sent us this bum battery. This is horse shit. Right. And she's like, are you sure you didn't like leave any interior lights on or anything like that? I'm like, no, we have a bum battery. I think I think if you check if you check the uh, Prius book again it's gonna say battery not working call the tow truck guy step two apologize to him step three (laughs) have him install battery correctly (laughs) step four then tell him to leave again (laughs) tell him to hit the road (laughs) step five go to car wash wash off white paint (laughs) step six remove wire from front grill (laughs) <laughs> step seven big chocolate cake throw at house so <laughs> so i'd ordered the battery from o'reilly auto parts so i call them up and they're like okay you can bring the battery into any one of our stores and swap it out it will give you a different battery so uh i do that head over to a store swap it out come back spend a bunch of time installing the new battery start it up it works like, this is great. I'm sitting there in the car, like, just just like feeling like I just came because I'm such a man. You know, what do you guys think happened at that point? <laughs> <laughs> if this if this was a, a script that I wrote, it would be you. You put your hands behind your head and lean back and go, ah, and then there's a shout of outside the car and the car just explodes. <laughs> <laughs> What could go wrong leans back. <laughs> well, I did lean back. I looked up and lo and behold, the uh, interior lights were on. So oh. I had. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so I didn't actually have a bad battery. I had just <laughs> left the interior lights on for three straight days. And uh, that had killed the other battery. So, um... Oh, my gosh. Chad, you know what oh, you did, right? No. <laughs> Chad, what what would you say that you did? I Chad fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> you fucked up. <laughs> so on a, on a scale of like one to I don't know who's the biggest who's who's the like most manly man Bear Grylls or something. Where am I on a scale of one to Bear Grylls? Tom Selleck, Robert Irvine. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you fucking nerd, turn off your interior lights. I don't know. Have you guys had any similar experiences where you fucked up your car or whatever? I went through a stretch when I was buying a lot of cheap cars just over and over, and I learned a ton about working on and fixing cars in that time. Uh, so I can do a bit more things now, but I totally agree that I just don't give a shit about cars and i don't get like (laughs) the male what's usually male fascination with cars like and i never will Um, right i know it's like a manly type of thing but i just have never felt that geiger you you're also not much of a car guy i'm not an auto man there are certain cars i think look cool 
Uh, Chad, I know you're big into Lambos. Yeah, they look pretty sweet. Um, <laughs> yeah, and you can get a lot of puss with them. <laughs> and you can change their battery so easily, I'm sure. <laughs> right, yo, I'm sure. <laughs> Highly available Lamborghini batteries everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. I think there's certain cars that look cool. Like there are a couple cars I think I would want if I had my druthers, but I just don't give a shit that much about them. Like we recently got a new a new pre owned car, and it's you know it's got really good gas mileage and it's fine. It looks okay, but it just has no pickup. Like you have to put your the pedal through the floor to get it going anywhere. And some people give me shit about it. I'm like, I'm not a drag race artist i don't care right it's just a call it gets me to the train station so i can go into work or at least it did clearly not because you called it a drag race artist a drag race artist <laughs> yeah, well, they're artists they're not just drag racers no there's an art to it you gotta jam your foot on the fucking gas I seen those <laughs> uh i uh i definitely commiserate with you chad though in that like I there I went I'm better now, but I know jack shit all about cars. And like, uh, we were driving home from a Badger game one time. I feel like or Madison or something. And my car's muffler broke in the middle of the highway, and it just started making this ungodly noise. And I pulled to the side of the road, and I'm like, ah, oh, something's wrong. And I didn't know. Like, I lo- I went and looked underneath the car, and there was like the muffler was like dragging on the ground. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's it, but I should probably like. I felt compelled to like do something else to make sure it wasn't the engine. So, but all I knew how to do was check the oil. So I just like check the oil. I'm like, yeah, there's oil in it. I guess we're driving home. <laughs> we went home like nothing to fucking do with the oil at all. There's like a piece of the car dragging and like sparking the ground. I think I don't think it's because of the oil though. What do you think? Yeah, no, same, same. I don't think it is. There's definitely times I've been I've been stuck places and I've just opened the hood, like knowing there's not shit I can do. Just staring right. inside of there, thinking, "Man, what, <laughs> what am I even doing, staring at this?" <laughs> like there'd be a button inside that just says "push it to fix." <laughs> like, oh, there it is. When it's especially galling because my father-in-law is a huge car guy. Like he is a, he's a, uh, an engineer by trade, and he's very into cars and fixing things. And it's any basically any manly thing, like knowing how to fix something in the house. I'll try to do it, and he'll go, "Oh, that." No, well, you did okay. God damn it. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. And like, so our battery had died like a year or two ago in our car. And I just went and got a new one and put it in. And it worked fine. And Betsy is like talking to her dad. Oh, and you'd be so proud of Nick. He changed the battery in our car, which again, to idiots like us is like, oh man, I am fucking the brawny paper towel man now. But like, <laughs> for like people that know how to fix cars, it's like, Oh, really? That's like the simplest fucking thing on earth. Right. Good job, moron. So I, I just like, I remember like looking at her and like doing the, the throat slashing thing. I'm like, no, st- shut up. No, don't. That's not something to brag about. <laughs> I will slash your throat. If you say one more word. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, guys, you'll not. Nick lasted 45 seconds last night in bed. Aren't you proud of him? That's not a good thing. Stop, stop bringing <laughs> Your father-in-law is like, oh, yeah, nice effort. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> it was really weird when he offered me how to show do, how, show me to do how to do it the right way. I'm like, oh, yeah, no, I'm not Let interested. me teach you uh, the pull-out method. So, <laughs> what? <laughs> and then uh, he's like, it, it should look like this at the end. He threw a giant bucket of white paint on my wife. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> You, <laughs> you haven't mastered the pull-out method either. Not true. No, no. I keep going the wrong way. I keep pushing it farther in. It's like, oh shit! I should have read the directions. Now, do you guys legitimately? Hang on. Do you guys legitimately think you could pull out? Have a better yeah. chance of <laughs> better chance of winning as a drag race artist, winning an actual drag race. Yeah, uh, or winning a competition uh, for be a drag queen, like legitimately, which one do you think you have a better mm. chance of winning? Oh, well, this is easy for me because if I was going to be a drag race artist, I would be the Picasso of drag race <laughs> artists. Meaning that after my first drag race, my face would look like Picasso because I would wreck the car immediately. Um, look like a Picasso. <laughs> That's what that joke was supposed to be. <laughs> I was like, I think it was a normal looking guy. No, you guys are self portraits. Picasso looked <laughs> fucked. Okay. 
if you did manage to win a drag race, would you feel like such a man that they would open the door and they're like, who the fuck threw white paint all over the inside of the car? <laughs> Turn off your interior lights. <laughs> it's like you're the drag car, everything's on inside. But the, the drag race, I actually think, or not the drag race, the drag show, I think I do pretty good at. First of all, I have experience. I used to be in the theater back in, you know, high school. So I have some experience there. Plus... I have had multiple Halloween costumes where I have worn dresses. I went as Princess Peach one year, Hannah Montana, the Queen of Hearts from Alice in Wonderland. So I'm very comfortable with that sort of breezy area around my crotch that a dress provides. Uh, As someone who saw you as Hannah Montana, might I make one small suggestion (laughs) and recommend that you, maybe this time you shave (laughs) when you try to be a woman? Look kind of grotesque. I think I could definitely win. I would do terrible as a drag race artist, uh, but as a drag queen, I've got an incredible set of games, so I think it's a good chance I could win. That. Yeah. <laughs> I so I would fail as a drag race artist, both in the sense of racing a drag car or trying to do a painting of a drag racer. I don't think either one I'd be good right. at. But I, yeah, drag queen. I'm working on a solid B cup pretty soon here, so I think. <laughs> With just a little support, um, I think I'd look like the uh, really like a nice dad bod drag queen, which I'm sure is real in. Now, let me ask you this real quick, Novak, since you said that you are now an expert in changing car or fixing car stuff, and I don't know how to change the windshield wiper fluid. So, is the correct way to change the windshield wiper fluid, based on your experience, that I would open up the windshield wiper fluid jug? And then piss in it and put it on someone's doorstep. <laughs> that's how that goes. That's correct. Okay. That is correct. Good. <laughs> Real quickly to combine the two stories, and I know we need to get to the snacks. So I'll make this fast. Right. No, you're fine. It's better be a great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had a high school friend that we played an auto fixing prank on. So auto fixation. Uh, an auto asphyxiation prank <laughs> where I choked the shit on myself while whacking off and almost died. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes on you. <laughs> you got pranked. <laughs> it was the weirdest episode of punk ever. No. Um, so she was extremely gullible. Uh, nice lady though. And we, her blinker went out, heard the blinker in her car. Yeah. Or like it was like our left turn signal or something, and she's like, "Oh, what do I do?" And I'm and we told her that she was out of blinker fluid, so we pulled into a gas station and we're like, "Oh, they probably have some here. You should just go find it in there." So she went and couldn't find it, and she, she I guess she went up to the front desk because we all went in to like pretend to buy gum because we just wanted to see it happen. So she went up to the front desk and she's like, "Oh yeah, excuse me, um, I'm looking for some blinker fluid," and the guy looks at her and goes, "What?" And she goes, and really like patronizingly, she goes your blinker fluid. And the guy's like, uh, I think your friends are playing a tr- prank on you. We all die Latin. Like, you guys are assholes. So yeah, at least you guys are not so dumb about cars that you would have fallen for that. Well, I guess I'm assuming you wouldn't have fallen for that Ooh. prank. I mean, <laughs> I did think my car was, my first thought was that my car was out of electric fluid. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was easier to prank you than I thought. <laughs> you, you believe in electric fluid. We've got to eat snacks so that way we can get Geiger up to a C cup before the next yeah. uh, drag Thank show. You. So we're going to rate our snacks on a five-point scale. A love that, like that, indifferent to that, dislike that, and hate that. And let's start with the payday because it's the most common of them. Now, we did payday. We all kind of admit that we have not had a payday bar in some time, even though it is a, a common bar. When's the last time you guys remember having one of these? Boy, I don't know when that... I mean, I'm guessing Trick or Treat at some point when I was a kid. They had the little fun size ones. Since then, I doubt I've had one as an adult. I don't I don't remember this at all. I got one like maybe two to three years ago just to, just to try it out because I love peanuts, you know, so uh, I'll try pretty much anything that's just like sort of a peanut bar. But I'd kind of forgotten what it was like. It really is just fucking peanuts. Like, it's a lot of fucking peanuts <laughs> just glued together. There's not much Calm to Calm down. <laughs> fucking peanuts. There's caramel in the middle, too. It's um, caramel, 
caramel and peanuts is I think is all it is in here. It's called a peanut caramel bar. All right, Gagger, you are going to start us off. What do you think of payday and what rating do you give it? I love payday. Who like doesn't like getting paid? The candy bar, however. <laughs> um, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Telling jokes to dead silence amongst my best friends. <laughs> um, you earned that silence. Be the last time. <laughs> <laughs> Edit in some laughs. I'm editing in more silence. This is just going to be like 35 <laughs> seconds of silence after that. <laughs> the rest is just like all of my, uh, the rest of what I say will be taken out too. It's okay. I, you know, I, for me, when I buy a candy bar, I'm looking for some chocolate. It's just, I'm a big chocolate fan. I love peanuts and I love peanut butter. And I will say, I don't taste any caramel in this. It, it, Chad's right. It just tastes like peanuts held together with like a sweet glue of some sort. But the, I, the middle doesn't necessarily taste caramely to me. I do like salty snacks. I'm torn about this. I don't really think it's that great. It's just kind of plain. I like peanuts. Uh, I, 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 indifferent to that. I, I'm really torn. I don't. I, I, you know, in some respects, I kind of like it, but in other words, it's just not a candy bar I'd return to. Because again, when I'm looking to eat candy bars, I'm looking to eat something with chocolate. So I, I would say indifferent. It's not a bad bar. It tastes fine. It's just kind of not why it's not exciting to me. Indifferent to that is the starting vote. Chad, what do you think? Well, I like peanuts and this has a lot of peanuts. But on the other hand, I like peanuts and peanuts are good. Fuck you, Chad. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know though, because I like peanuts. Um... <laughs> hey Chad, go go choose, go check to see if you left all the lights in your house on. <laughs> yeah, I I agree that this is missing chocolate is the obvious thing that it's missing there, right? Just coated a little bit in chocolate all the way around. You could have a serious winner here. I still think it's good. Uh, it's got a, a nice level of salt, I think, and the peanuts are good. I like peanuts, so I'm gonna give this a like that. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. oh wow really come on Novak tell me how much you like peanuts you fucking prick I'm, I'm more with <laughs> Chad did all that shit at me <laughs> yelling at me for it <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just waiting for it I'm just waiting for it I, I'm actually going to agree with you here alright I'm going to agree with you because you're going to agree with him that you like peanuts <laughs> no, no 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 it's very plain okay it's very plain. Yeah. It's not doesn't taste good. I wouldn't eat it. I wouldn't go eat it again. Hmm. But I also wouldn't tell somebody to not eat it. For me, it's just okay. The caramel, like you said, non-existent. It's not caramely in consistency or flavor. It looks in, in what it looks like is the only uh, caramelness to it, and it's not gooey or anything. It's just it's not good. So I'm going to give it an indifferent to that. I like peanuts. So let's move on to the next. <laughs> no, this is this is kind of similar. We tried the Munch Bar not too long ago, but I I would prefer this to the Munch Bar. I don't even remember the Munch Bar. I think they're real. I mean, how many ways can you stick peanuts together with some sugar? Yeah. So I think they're real similar. Yeah. Um, but we all like peanuts. That was agreed upon. <laughs> Which let's uh, do the gummy next. So we split up the chocolate. So this is the SpongeBob SquarePants Gummy <laughs> Krabby Patty Candy. The fucking weirdest thing. <laughs> what is this supposed to be? Okay, it looks kind of like a burger, but the patty part is very weirdly pink, I guess because it's a crab patty or something. Uh... The thing about SpongeBob is SpongeBob I'm, I think it might actually be, for a kid's show, kind of funny. It's just like the generation behind us to where I never really saw much of this show or like enough to even know what this what a Krabby Patty is supposed to technically be. Yeah. But this one is in... They break up into four pieces, so you can kind of like break apart and rearrange this burger, which is kind of a fun thing, I think. Very fun. Sure. <laughs> 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 Chad, this is already pre-stacked for you. You don't have to stack it. <laughs> Do they have different flavors? I'm trying them each individually. I'm gonna try them each individually. Then I'll take a, I'll reassemble and eat a whole bite of the burger. It's definitely a much harder gummy. It's not like a, a gummy bear. It's got to be like co- sort of torn apart a bit more. The consistency of the bun feels a little bit softer than the other two, but I can't tell any difference in the flavor. 
Yeah, the uh, lettuce is the hardest part, mm-hmm. I think. Just like on a real burger. <laughs> well, it's certainly not the mu- the meat or the buns. I hope. <laughs> you don't uh, use bricks for burgers when you or for buns when you eat. No, not usually. I use peanuts because I like them so much. <laughs> All right, Chad, you're up first for SpongeBob. Wow, there's literally nothing about this snack that works for me. I'm not a huge gummy fan generally. The consistency is much harder than I like from a gummy. There's next to no flavor. It's when you stack all four of them on top of each other, it's actually kind of hard to eat. This thing sucks. There are no redeeming qualities. Hate that. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's very innocuous candy. <laughs> um. <laughs> no redeeming qualities? Name one. I'll name one. I'm about to go. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh i don't i don't think the gut the flavor is all that bad of the gummy it's a little the consistency is not the best for a gummy candy and the flavor needs to be definitely punched up a bit it's very plain it tastes fine i could eat i could eat more of them and and not feel bad about it but i probably wouldn't purposely reach for it um but it's okay it's a, clearly it's supposed to be a candy for kids and i think they could have fun building the burger and um the taste would be universally liked by children but i'm going to give it i hate to keep doing it but i'm going to give it an indifferent as well it's just not very good or very bad geiger who are you more uh, aligned with yeah definitely you i so they're not good i mean i think partly what would hold me back too from eating these again is like i'm an adult <laughs> <laughs> just like, excuse me, uh, I'm looking for a box of Krabby Patties. Like, you know, like it just you'll feel like an idiot. The taste is fine. It just tastes like a random fruit snack. It's not really that bad. I agree. Like I try. I, so I ate both. Wow. Uh, only because I wanted to try the full stack. Well, the, I wanted to try the burger form and the individual forms. Eating them individually, I think, is the better bet because you get more of the flavor. I you, think individually. You couldn't do that by just taking small bites. How small are your bites? These things are minuscule. <laughs> He just told you he's not a child. I got a big ass mouth. <laughs> oh, I'm not a fucking child, my man. Now give me more Krabby Patty fruit snacks. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's um, they're fine. I mean, again, I, I'm with Novak. I think my kids would love something like this. They don't watch SpongeBob, I mean, but it's just candy you can play with and make a burger out of. Uh, incidentally, Krabby Patty is my drag queen name, so that helps. <laughs> but um. <laughs> I would give this a solid indifferent. I, they're an innocuous, like harmless kid snack. I wouldn't eat myself, but I think there's nothing wrong with them. To, to say that these are so bad that they're a hate that is is laughable. I don't know how they can be so offensive. We've eaten so many worse things on this podcast than like just a sugar flavored candy. Well, I'm glad it's laughable since this is a comedy podcast. So I'm just trying to make you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, oh, <laughs> I should have been funny this whole time. I guess <laughs> no one told me. We know. Well, the payday is still in the lead with <laughs> two indifference and a like, and only the white chocolate Snickers stands in its way from winning the episode. It's segment time. Geiger, what you got? Okay. So it is uh, Friday, which for many Americans means payday, right? Uh-huh. Uh, also, we ate a payday today, so I thought I'd do a, a money-related uh, segment. So I have found a list <laughs> on... Uh, <laughs> blog.musement.com, which sounds legit. It's got a nice picture uh, for 12 of the world's most expensive foods. So my original thought was that we would rank these like, would we buy these or not? But these are all so exorbitant that we, I mean, in reality, it doesn't make sense. So what I'm going to ask you guys to do is just, we'll read them off. And if, let's say money were not much of an object, would you still feel compelled to waste your money on something like this or not? Okay, so if you if you had, if you were a man of means, uh, would you just say pay or nay for each one of these if you think that you it would be worth the investment for you? All right. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we're assuming that we're some like we're some rich piece of shit, Elon Musk or something like that. Right. Right. But with still your sensibilities of like even Elon Musk isn't going to spend thousands of dollars on th- something he thinks would be shitty or dumb. Although, well, that's probably uh, like half his companies. <laughs> <laughs> Am I specifically a piece of shit or am I just wealthy? Yeah. You are, you're, well, yeah, you're a piece. Look, the minute you get money, we all know you, Novak. It's going to be right to your head and you're going to turn into a piece of shit. I know. I'm going to be leaving 
golden jars full of piss on people's doorstep. <laughs> You're gonna <laughs> piss money. You're gonna drive your drag race, uh, drive your your drag racing car door to door to leave jars of piss on. <laughs> Just throwing golden eggs uh-huh. at people's houses, like from Willy Wonka. <laughs> You're gonna be going into people's houses, turning their cars on, turning on the inside lights, and then leaving. <laughs> what uh, part of Willy Wonka was he whipping gold eggs at people's houses? <laughs> <laughs> Willy Wonka. <laughs> There was the golden egg. She sings the song. She wants the goose that lays the golden eggs. And then as she's director's cut. And then he whips it at her. She's falling down the chute to the incinerator. He's throwing eggs at her. uh, uh, Like after her. The post post credit scene is just Wonka speeding down a road, just <laughs> whipping eggs at people. Remember that part where Augustus Gloop gets stuck in the tomb, and so Willy Wonka starts cracking his feet with a baseball bat over and over. <laughs> it's pretty violent. All right, all right. You're not going to sidetrack another one of my expertly planned <laughs> segments. All right. So number one is uh, saffron. It's a spice, and it's apparently the most expensive spice in the yes. world. It is nicknamed red gold. So the retail price for one pound of saffron is anywhere from five to ten thousand uh, dollars. Apparently, it is it takes a lot of manual work to extract the spice from a particular uh, flower that it grows on. So, uh, one hundred and fifty flowers produced just a single gram of dry saffron. I don't know that I would could tell you what it tastes like or what it's used for um it's a nay for me i i but i, I don't know well they they don't sell it by the pound like you can get it at safeway right, right. and it'll be just on the regular spice rack but instead of being like a dollar 20 like the cinnamon is it'll be like 25 dollars for like one of those little jars gotcha it was like tiny little pieces right yeah and we had a recipe one time that we made that was supposed to have saffron and we just left it out because we were like fuck that but if I was a rich piece of shit, for sure I'm putting that saffron in. So that's that's a what are my choices? Pay or or pay or nay? Pay. I I'm gonna go nay because I actually have had it before. Uh, we did have a a little, not even a jar, but like this little container with like individual pieces of saffron in it. We put it in something, and I remember being wholly unimpressed. So I'm gonna say nay. Hmm. Uh, number two, this show one isn't that surprising. Kobe beef, right? Uh, it's a pretty well renowned as being one of the most expensive types of meat in the world. Right. The Kobe beef of Taijima breed is renowned as the world's best. It's very fatty, which helps enhance the flavor. Um, Kobe beef sells for nearly a hundred dollars a pound. I'll tell you right now, I would buy the shit out of Kobe beef if I was rich. There's no, I'd probably have a heart attack, but I love steak so much. This is a no brainer. for me. Have you had it before? I feel like I've had it in something, but I don't recall. I, I don't recall for sure. I know I've seen it on lots of menus to the point where I feel like I might have had it like a work thing or something. I'm definitely going to say pay. I agree. That's If I'm going to be spending my money, if I'm this rich of an asshole, um, then I'm going to be spending it on steak. I'm actually going to say nay for this one. I have had Kobe beef uh, when I was in Japan. I was not impressed. I mean, it was good, but I did not think it was any better than like some regular, like a regular New York strip that I've had at like a a nice steakhouse. Mm -hmm. And also at the nice steakhouses here, you could get like American style Kobe beef, which I've gotten and it's just as good. Oh, really? I think, I don't know. Probably there's probably some like fucking beef sommelier out there who would like shit all over me for saying that, but. That's a thing, right? Beef sommeliers. Uh, sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> they shit on people, too. So that's yeah. perfect. <laughs> they shit all over you. Uh, number three, again, I think not surprising. And the food that I always associate with rich people, like it's the like the go-to mm. like parody food for super rich, that is Alma's caviar. So uh, obviously caviar or fish eggs, I believe it is. Um it's it's known as white caviar. The Almas brand, uh, Almas variety specifically is white caviar. The clearer it is, the better the price, and that price can reach up to eighteen thousand dollars per every two pounds, um, because the fish that produce it are very very rare. So mm. I I would pay. I you know that's really expensive. But if I'm going to be a rich douchebag, I'm just curious what caviar tastes like. I've never had it, um, so I would probably try the caviar. And I like seafood, although I know that's probably not really seafood. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, caviar not exactly the same as uh, slicing into a nice piece of salmon. <laughs> well, just like an egg is basically like eating chicken, right? <laughs> I ha- I'm pretty sure I've had caviar, and I remember not liking it, so I'll go nay on this one. I'm also going to go nay. I had a very small taste at one point, and not at all uh, my thing, so I'm also going nay. Uh, Number five, the Densuke watermelon. So it is a watermelon that grows in Japan, and they don't have a ton of arable land, so fruit is kind of hard to grow there, which is why the price is so expensive. This is a black watermelon. So they have a picture of it, Mm. and the outside is completely black. I don't know if it tastes any different or anything like that, but one watermelon that was around 18 pounds, which granted is a very large watermelon, was sold for about six thousand dollars wow i hate watermelon this is an easy uh nay watermelon can go kiss my ass it sucks (laughs) (laughs) that's an easy yay for me if our our thing is always if i was a rich asshole so if i was a rich asshole um i definitely would want this water i love watermelon it's one of the top fruits definitely pay yeah same uh watermelon's great I would pay for that, and then I would take a bite, and then I would have the second bite kiss Geiger's ass. Damn straight. <laughs> uh, number six, the Yubari melon, another Japanese fruit. Uh, it is the most expensive melon in the world. Last year, two Yubari melons were sold for nearly $28,000. What fucking dickhead is buying a melon for $28,000? Not this one. I know that if I was rich. Cantaloupe sucks. All melons suck. I'm out on this. <laughs> It looks like a cantaloupe. That's why I said probably that. Willy Wonka. Yeah, it probably is Willy Wonka. He and then he wasted him just throwing them at uh, <laughs> fucking. I don't know. I can't remember any of the, the guy that watched TV. I don't know their names. Mike. <laughs> Mike TV. All right. All right. I was there. We go. Um, I'm going to agree that I don't like a lot of. I love watermelon, but um, I think I'm going to keep my money in this case and go nay. Uh, I don't know. It just doesn't sound like it'd be good. Yeah, same. I agree. That sounds gross. Number seven, the Matsutake mushroom, uh, or the pine mushroom, which ranks up among the expensive foods in the world, particularly rare and fragile. It grows in Oregon, Asian, and East of Europe, uh, and its price per pound can reach up to $1,000. Now, I love mushrooms. These ones, the, the picture is kind of funny. It kind of looks just like a, a dirty dick. Um, <laughs> it, it's got a, It's very dick-shaped. I you know, but I love mushrooms. I would try this. And up to a thousand again, I'm super rich, but up to a thousand I think wouldn't be that bad if I was super rich. I wouldn't feel like I'm being super, super extravagant. I'm out on strange mushrooms. I was I was gonna pass until you said that it was uh dirty dick shaped, and then I was <laughs> totally in. I'm paying. So I'm pay. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'll save the vanious one for you. Eight is Knipschilt chocolate. So it's a chocolate truffle madeleine, which is a French butter cake uh, that is made by the U.S.-based Danish chocolatier Fritz Knipschilt, um, $250 for one. So it's described as the most extravagant in the world. It has a Perigord truffle coated with Valrona dark chocolate, and it will also come in a silver box filled with sugar beads. A $250 piece of candy. Now, again, it's probably one of the cheaper things on this list. Yeah. Man, that's a lot of money for just a piece of candy. And truffles, I I don't know. I don't, not, as far as candy goes, I could give or take them. Sounds okay to me, but I'm still going to, I'm going to nay this one. That doesn't excite me. That's, I think that sounds pretty good. Uh, I would totally try that. So, uh, yeah. Pay. Okay. Pay for that shit. Nah. You rich asshole. (laughs) You fucking rich prick. That's right. Look at me. Rich piece of shit. Nine, edible gold. So I've actually seen this on some things. Uh, edible gold sounds stupid to me. Here, What they say here is that it's it's just done for decorative purposes, really. There's no interesting taste or nutritional quality to it. Uh, Elixia, which is a French lemonade maker, Jesus, uh, was uh, created a lemonade containing 24 carat, carat gold flakes, and it will cost $15 per 25-ounce bottle. That's a lot, but it's not that. I mean, I've paid more for liquor. So I, but it just doesn't sound impressive to me at all. I've, I think I've had gold flake on, uh, like some pastries before, and I definitely yeah. have had supposedly gold flakes in Goldschlager, which tastes like shit. Yeah, but yeah, I, this is an A. I even if it were like not so cheap, it just sounds dumb. It's just dumb. It just seems so stupid. It has nothing. If it doesn't improve the taste or make an a, like an interesting experience, why would I care? 
I'm paying. You are? I must. Uh, look, I'm a rich a- asshole, right? We've established. Mm-hmm. That. Yeah, you are. Right, we what know. What do I want more than gold running through my body, through my blood and veins? I want to be pure gold, okay? And so I will do anything to become that. I am paying. I'm going to eat as much of this stuff as I can. Pay. Man. I hope this podcast doesn't take off. Novak's going to turn into a psychopath. You made. You told me I was an asshole. I have no choice but to play the part. That's true. Uh, if Novak turns into a psychopath, he will have just come full circle from his childhood. <laughs> right. <laughs> He'll be dragging actual children across the street to make the cars work. <laughs> Just eating fistfuls of gold. <laughs> <laughs> That's not piss in the jug. It's liquid gold. Glug, glug, glug. So you would turn, well, you, well, you would basically turn into gold member from Austin Powers, essentially. Yes. Isn't that what he did? Eight gold or something like that? You fucking uh... terrible gold member reference from Austin Powers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> My bad. I forgot the high standards. You're the we asshole here. now. Yeah. You're the yeah. broke asshole. <laughs> I, def- I definitely saw Gold Member when it came out and walked out of that theater saying, I hope I never see that movie again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, uh, Gold Flakes, right. So that's a nay. I've had Gold Flakes. They're bad. Even as a rich asshole, fuck those things. Okay. Almost done here. Come on. So Fugu or Globefish is known to be the most dangerous fish in the world. Because consumption can be fatal if not prepared properly. Uh, so it, a lot of its expense is really around having to make sure someone is highly trained in making it. So it's more about the preparation, not the fish itself, as I understand it. Right. Because there's also no cure for the poison. So if you eat fugu that was made incorrectly, you will die and there's nothing they can do about it. So it costs around $200 a fish. I'll be honest, I love seafood, as we said. This would absolutely be something I'd want to do if I was a rich dick. Like this would be like, Oh, I ate fugu. Yeah, could have killed me, but you know what? Yeah, like, it'd be a cool thing to brag about. And two hundred bucks is like, I mean, I piss that into a jug on a, on the daily basis. So, uh, I would, uh, I'd eat it for sure. Same. I think if you're a rich asshole, you've flown all over the world. You've you know done everything there is to do. Anyways, you might as well just roll the dice with some poison fish. Uh, so yeah, sign me up for that. Yeah, we got three because if I'm a rich asshole, I'm unstoppable. Like, I know that nothing can defeat me. <laughs> Certainly not some some stupid poison fish. And even if some of the poison was ingested, um, it could not overcome that my body is now made of almost pure gold. All the gold I've eaten. You def- as a rich asshole, you definitely got that money through your own hard work and not through circumstance and luck, for sure. Not from suing a chef for feeding me a poison fish. <laughs> That's why I'm originally rich. <laughs> yeah, didn't your dad try fugu and it, it ended horribly? Isn't that how you got your wealth? Uh, I, I think you've conflated being super rich with being like a super villain. That's not that I'm like... <laughs> No, that's pretty much what I Feed think. Feed me of. all your gold flag and fugu. I cannot die. <laughs> this honestly you, is pretty Batman. much what I think super rich people are like. So I think they are basically super villains. <laughs> Bill Gates is just moving the, the fugu across the table with his mind. Uh, all right. Number 11, acorn-fed Iberian ham. So jamón iberico del Belota uh, or a- acorn-fed Iberian ham is produced from pigs fed exclusively on acorns, uh, giving the meat a particularly nutty taste. They're aged for three years and sell on average for $100 a pound or $1,200 to $1,400 uh, $1, for an entire bone-in ham. I'm totally doing that. I think that ham, would, I've had not, like fancy hams and stuff in charcuterie plates at restaurants. Uh, they're delicious. I'm not a huge, huge ham guy, but uh, this type of ham I think would be really good. And again, that's a cost conscious thing for a for a uber rich uh, ultra villain uh, fighting, <laughs> destroying the world with my avarice. Uh, I could think I could try some uh, some Iberico ham. I'd be down for that. I have a bunch of uh, money left over after passing on a number of the other foods. So I'm definitely going to eat this ham. What, you have a budget now? <laughs> <laughs> what, what does happen? <laughs> well... I was funds are running low, and I'm try. I've uh, my dad's birthday is still two months away. I'm gonna invite him back to the fish restaurant. <laughs> yeah, no, I bought too many uh, rocket powered uh, nuclear bombs to threaten the UN with, and I'm running low on cash. 
got to feed my dad some poison fish. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, time for some fugu. You ready? <laughs> BRB, got to poison my dad. Um, <laughs> so if instead of Austin Powers gold member, he had made Austin Powers <laughs> ham member then it would have starred me so pay. okay if i'm banned you're banned too that's fucking awful <laughs> uh, uh, i don't even know how it's somehow worse i don't think there was such a thing as worse but you found it <laughs> ham member that's not even clever you just stuck the word ham in, instead of gold <laughs> i want to eat the ham <laughs> fuck it a. all right comedy podcast my ass all right uh and number 12 the Puel. Uh, so this is cheese that is made from donkey's milk on a small farm in Serbia. So its price, as much as $1,700 a pound, is explained by the fact that donkey milk is very difficult to produce. If a cow produces about eight gallons of milk per day, a donkey yields about just 0.85 cups. And then it has to be milked three times per day so as not to injure her udder. And to top things off, to make just one pound, a little more than three gallons of donkey milk is necessary. So... As a lactose intolerant person, again, I don't necessarily follow that, but I I don't love cheese enough that I, I would have to have it. Uh, it's not worth just the gastrointestinal problems to pay, like, you know, $600 or $1,700 a pound uh, for cheese. So I'm out on that. That's a nay for me. Well, as famous Austin Powers supervillain cheese <laughs> member once said, Get in my belly. I totally want that cheese. Hey, I love cheese. That sounds great. I'd totally try it. <laughs> Dr. Evil, over to you. <laughs> I will pay a lot of money for donkey secretion, but it's not the milk. Nay. <laughs> <laughs> Mini me, quit humping the donkey laser. <laughs> Okay. All right. We've got, we are way on time. We got a snack to eat. So, yeah. Let's eat the white chocolate Snickers. I've been actually super interested in this because a Snickers, we might agree, um, is a basket of puppies. We all love Snickers. Three loves. Uh, I'd agree. So, this, the same, supposedly the same ingredients peanuts, caramel, nougat, and, but white chocolate on the outside instead of dark. But if you bite, um, as one of my family members bit before I had a chance to, the inside looks a little different to me. So give it a bite. We've tried a lot of Snickers on this podcast, like Snickers variations, and none of them have held up to the original. No. No. I mean, it's the original for a reason. Why is it so light on the inside? Like, is the nougat also white colored or something? What am I looking I at? I know. It's like, strange. It's not as clear. I can't see the caramel as clearly in the peanuts. Yeah. Um, I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's the color that's thrown it off or it's made a little differently. It does feel maybe a little flatter, like if you look at it from the side, than a regular Snickers. I was wondering the same thing. It doesn't seem nearly as big as a regular Snickers, yeah. It's a similar taste to a regular Snickers. I'm up first. Um, I'm surprised how kind of similar it is. Look, it's not as good as a regular Snickers. There's White chocolate cannot just be substituted for milk chocolate and have there be no change in taste but i like it more than i expected to i will say that i was actually dreading eating it and it's making my love for snickers uh tainted a bit but i actually think it's not too bad i I wouldn't get it over regular snickers but that's not a reason to say it's not still good i'm actually going to give it a like that uh, to start. So it could get interesting here. Now, the payday, if you remember, had two indifference and one like. So this is going to come down to the wire. Um, Geiger, what do you think? You and the wires. <laughs> I, hey, look, white chocolate, you can get over there in line with watermelon to kiss my ass. White water, or watermelon, or uh, watermelon, fuck. White chocolate sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I can't talk. I am surprised it tastes so much like regular Snickers. I agree with you there. It's just, I really don't like white chocolate. I don't understand why people like it. It's just general sweetness. It's not even, I don't know, there's no defining quality to white chocolate that makes it good. Um, so for that reason, this isn't horrible. It tastes enough like a Snickers to where I can't say it's just bad. Um, but I am giving this a very lukewarm indifferent. It's not, 
I'd never buy this again in a million years, especially when it's right next to our regular Snickers. There's no possible way this is superior to a can many of the candies I like. So it, it's not bad. It's it's really it is not bad, but um, no, it's a it's a solid indifferent for me. Ooh, all right. Some drama has been created. So Chad, an indifferent will tie. Anything um, better than that will win. Anything lower, a loss. What is it? Well, I do love Snickers. It's possibly my favorite uh, just traditional bar, candy bar. White chocolate is an abomination. While this bar does taste similar to a regular Snickers bar, it is missing the chocolate, and it is overly sweet. The white chocolate pushes it to the point where it is it is way too sweet. I actually find this bar very disgusting. The only reason I'm not going to give it a hate dat is because it's got peanuts and I like peanuts. Dislike that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm with you there. I like peanuts. Uh, well, the payday wins. Uh, this has been, there was a kind of a weak showing all around today, but the payday has won the episode with two indifference and a like. Um, Geiger, where can the listeners contact us? Yes, if you are one of the world's last remaining superheroes and you can possibly stop Nick Novak, uh, please reach out to us. His, his egomaniacal power has reached heights that we can no longer curtail. Also, if you are a fan of Peanuts, let us know, because we like Peanuts. Uh, even like the comic strip, if you want to tell us all about Peppermint Patty fanfic or whatever you want to do, that's fine. Uh, you can reach out to us at you tried that at gmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter, hashtag you tried that, a Facebook group you tried that, uh, YouTube, we are on there as well. We are on Instagram, anywhere you can find your podcast. Leave us a, a like, a, a review, um, star us up. Uh, let us know what kind of snacks you'd like us to review on the podcast. Leave a question for the mailbag, anything uh, to interact. We love hearing from you, and thanks again for listening. All right. Now, if uh, before we go, guys, if you were super rich, rich assholes, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What would be. Is there some kind of amazing prank you'd like to pull um, or just some crazy way that you might like to spend your money? Have you thought about this before? Boy, I would uh, buy an NFL team and I would force them to play me a quarterback. (laughs) And then like (laughs) I would use my all my money and influence to like pay all the media off to be like that Nick Geiger, man. What an arm as I'm like lame duck passing things at the sideline. I'm like elected the Pro Bowl for no fucking reason. That'd be yeah. fun. Everyone would resent me, and I'd probably be injured immediately, but that'd be a good time. That's a good prank. It actually goes yeah. well with my my prank, because mine is that I would drive by your place whipping golden eggs at you, and I would become mm-hmm. a hero, based on your original prank. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Everyone would laud the weirdo throwing golden eggs at a random <laughs> athlete's house. Although, I guess I wouldn't be an athlete. <laughs> oh, look at <laughs> look at Jerry Jones. What an athlete. He's out there hobbling around the Dallas Cowboys practice facility. You're, you're not an athlete yeah. because you're on the field. <laughs> look at me. I am a professional athlete. And my, my prank would be that I would go over to your stadium and uh, leave the stadium lights on so that when the fans showed up, there was... Uh... They couldn't see anything because the bad <laughs> That's my, my prank. prank would be I would purchase the Mountain Dew division of PepsiCo and then hire all the workers to, instead of making Mountain Dew, piss into the cans and send them out to regular stores. And after a good month or two of circulation, everyone drank it and loved it. I'd go on TV and announce it was actually urine they were drinking. Pranked. Mm, nice. Yeah. You're like the Oompa Loompa of the Mountain Dew factory. <laughs> the, the, why am i an oompa loompa <laughs> <laughs> didn't they piss in the chocolate wasn't that part of the show they did what <laughs> <laughs> i missed that part <laughs> oompa loompa doompa dee doo i just took a shit in the chocolate river that's how it went right do i remember that <laughs> <laughs> what do you do when you're a kid you won't miss <laughs> Who do you blame? Oh, I need to take a piss. <laughs> I like how the Oompa Loompas and Chad thing rhymed <laughs> shit with river. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you blame? The person that wrote the song Oompa. 
Oompa doompa doompa dee doo. Did I mention my case of the gout? <laughs> uh, I hope people listen to the old episodes to know that. <laughs> All right. Well, we've got a um, hundredth episode just. Three episodes away. This was officially 97, so we're counting down to the 100th episode. Uh, coming up soon. We'll be back next time when we try out three brand new snacks. Yep. Yep.